too. So welcome, Jen. Thank you for spending the day with us. We're really excited about this. I'm already having more fun than I've had in a long time. <laughs> Being in a school, um, I, I can't wait to see the kids again. I, I was lucky enough to see these kids that work with these fabulous teachers already once, and I went back energized, as I know I will with you guys. Um, thanks for the invite. I am going to just share with you some of the things we're trying to do in the system. And as you can probably imagine, if the hardest place to make transformational change, there's two hard places. One is in the graduation learning years, which we currently call grade 10, 11, and 12. And of course the second is? University. Oh, secondary, yes. So I am trying to infiltrate. I'm jointly seconded by both ministries. So. It is a, it's a tough slogan, but uh, kids deserve our best work, as I'm sure you all agree, and so we are going to take as long as it needs to take to get it right, align what we do with what we know about learning. Sadly, some of our systems and structures don't currently, so we're going to need your help to help us push through. I always start with this little girl named Sarah, and I suggest on those days when you feel like running, screaming from the building and going home and saying, what? what have I done to like do this job, <laughs> that you refocus yourself back to kids. And it's usually not kids. It's usually some kind of system or structure or something that's gotten your way. But this is a little five-year-old who comes into our system like most five-year-olds, passionate, confident, loves learning. And guess what? We have tons of statistics that show that love of learning, that curiosity, that confidence dissipates in direct proportion to the years they go up the, up the system. But we don't want it to be in pockets. We want it to be systemic and sustainable and strategic because every single kid deserves our best work. I, one of the things I prided myself on was shaking the hands of every grade 12 graduate as a superintendent and then going back and talking to them. And sadly, here's what I would discover. Even those kids who appear to be outstanding, getting all the scholarships, doing the valedictorian, when you really talk to them about how engaged were you in your learning, they, when they talk, they, you can clearly see they've been compliant. I learned how to do school versus I loved it, I was engaged in it, and if I could, I'd stay longer. So that's kind of the driver, I think. And post-secondary, by the way, tell me what I have to do so I can get out of here and get on with it. Mostly. There's odd, the odd exception, obviously. But anyway, here's what I think, and this is based on all the research we've done and all the feedback that we have. And I'm going to give you some big concepts to think about. And then you're going to go, well, wait a second, I just did my practicum. I didn't see any of that. Right now, it's going to be like a draw <laughs> until we systemically change, right? And so you're still going to run into people who are hiding their eyes and folding their arms and saying, this too shall pass. But I'm going to say this, I don't think it will this time. And it has passed several times, and in many adventures we've tried, we've tried in this province have gone the way of the dodo bird, and they've been excellent. But two things happened. We never got social license before we tried to do it. Three things happened. The second thing was we tried to do it in a top-down way. Here's what we need you to do, get at it, without any time to practice. And the third thing was we didn't have technology in the way that we do right now, and the internet and the fact that the world is flat, and the fact that kids can learn all sorts of different ways. So my, my quote that I'm using now that gets some eyes rolling back in your heads, along with some, yeah, I get that, is we may not like change, but I think we're going to like irrelevance even less. But I think we have to start wrapping our heads around some of these kinds of things, like the role of teachers changed dramatically, and if it hasn't, it will. So in the, in, when I was a teacher, I'm ashamed to say. I thought I had to know more than the kids. So I thought I was the knowledge keeper, and I was going to, if you're lucky, share that with you. If I went into teaching now and thought that was the case, and I wasn't going to be a learner and be afraid to fail and learn with students, I think I'd be doomed. So I think we now just need to start thinking about an identity shift with teachers. We might even think of a different name to call ourselves, because teaching sounds like this. Whereas learning is like this. So maybe we want to be a coach, a mentor, and an activator. Someone who's going to really get a kid jazzed up about their learning. So here's another notion. When we have a few little systems that allow for this to happen, you can do sort of like a challenge or a 
You could do an independent directed study that you might get credit for. But the notion around this is way bigger than that. And that is we have to design a system where all this learning that we know kids do outside of our system gets brought into their learning profile and counts. So imagine if what they ended up with at the end of our day is some kind of learning profile that showed who they are and what I can do. And it, ha it wasn't just what they learned with us. Because quite frankly, if we get really honest, especially the way we do it in 80 minute blocks and we see them three times a week, or sometimes four in a semester every day for half a year, they learn way more outside of our building. And especially now because they can with the internet and the way that learning can happen. Then don't, isn't it incumbent upon us then to design a system where they can bring all that in and make it part of their, pro, their portfolio or their profile? So we right now, in, in most cases, not all, because there are teachers who will step out of this just because they know intuitively that they should, but we have lots of places where I am going to cover this curriculum. That's my job. That's what I signed up for. I don't teach kids. I teach physics. I'm making that up, and there's nothing against physics teachers, it's just the one I picked today. But the point is, it's a different, you have to wrap your head around, if competencies are the things we're really after, ensuring that kids have those skills that they need into the future, then the content is just a vehicle to get there. And then the question is, does the content have to be the same for all kids? Probably not. Someone, you had your hand up, and then Mark had his hand up. Yeah, just, um, what's the timeline for a new provincial then? Like if the provincials are so tied to like social like What do you mean like for the graduation stuff? Yeah. Like the test. The yeah. test. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So, like if I have a, if I have a provincial yep. test that I have to get, yep. that's tied to the old. Yeah. Like, I can tell you that. Should I just keep running? Just mm -hmm. as it gets asked? Like okay. So let me tell you about what's going on with the provincial assessments. Okay. And you're right because interestingly enough, even those provincial assessments that are only worth twenty percent change everything about the way the teacher teaches. Because yeah. we oh. have to teach to the test, and yeah. we have to get kids ready, and there's this, even when it's only 20%. And when you show them mathematically how badly a person has to do on 20%, <laughs> the impact you more. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. um, so the, the, there's this group called AGPA, Advisory Group for Provincial Assessment. And it's every single organization that has anything to do with kids in their system that sits at this table. So BCTF is there, superintendents, principals, MCFD, Finesse, the First Nations, they're all there. And their first task was, what are we doing about FSA? Okay, yeah. so that you know yeah. that needs yeah. some revamping. There's AGPA 2, which is now at a theater near you, <laughs> is their task to, what are we going to assess in those graduation learning years? Why would we be doing that? When, if we are, would we do it? But what's the purpose of what are we getting out of it? Because the feedback from the field around the graduation, the, the reason we started to build these, this, this new system was do something about grade 10, yeah. right? You've got these kids who are at their peak. What am I going to be? What am I going to do? All that hormonal stuff and everything else that was on in grade 10. <laughs> Plus, you're going to get three provincial exams. And you're going to get English, social science, math, PE, French, and planning for the most part. Or you can have a choice. And so, Science 10 is going to be assessed as sitting in legislation. And so my feedback back after I hear from the field was, but does it have to be a shitty Science 10 exam? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or could it just be some sort of Science 10 assessment? Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're working on allowing some districts to practice a new assessment, right? That more closely aligns with what we know about learning okay. instead of a list of 60 yeah. um, trivial yeah. pursuit questions yeah. that are factoid based. <laughs> we know that kid that, that a grade level or an age a kid is at has nothing to do with learning. Because we know they learn differently, we know they learn at different rates and in different ways, and yet we batch them into these things called grades. So when you're in grade three, you're this age, etc. So why do you think we do that? What is that based on, do you think? Why do we batch why do we have these things called grade levels? If you're thinking just about learning, just think about learning. Does anyone have any thoughts? Easy. Easy. For? The teacher. Adults. <laughs> right? <laughs> and historically, we've always done it that way. Why are we still doing that when we know kids learn at different rates all over the place? So 
When you say that, though, people go, how would we ever do that? First, we need to decide, is this what we should be doing? We shouldn't we be doing not separating by the grades once we know about learning? Then it isn't incumbent upon us to figure it out. And here's the other bizarre thing we do, probably for the same reason. But someone explain how this has anything to do with learning. I'm going to go to social studies for 80 minutes and I'm going to learn this. A bell rings and I stop learning that. I put that in my backpack and I go to this other place and I learn 80 minutes of math unrelated to that. Stop. And then I go to, you get the drift, right? Does that have any, is there any, when I ask this question, it's a funny answer to this question. Does that have anything to, is there any other career in the world where that's the case? I proclaim when I'm standing in front of all these people. There's only one. What is it? It's <laughs> teaching. <laughs> it's teaching. It's not a normal way of learning, right? So then why are we still doing that when we know that every time you ask the question, and you, you might want to do this with your class sometime, get your class to answer this question. Name me a time when you were so engaged in your learning you didn't want it to stop. So think about that for just a second. Every single time that question gets asked, people will answer with things like, I was engaged, it was relevant, it, I was actually doing something, it was experiential. We get the same answers every time. And yet, we still do these 80 minute blocks of unrelated pieces of learning. So, maybe we ought to stop doing that, and maybe we'll try introducing that at the hardest place to make change, which is graduation learning years. Hold that thought. This is another thing we do that we have no business doing anymore, and that is making reporting this big event. And it's often like an autopsy report. You saw you were doing too bad, we're moving on. Versus, we have the complete ability now to just report on a, communicate on a student's progress of its standards in an ongoing way. For those of you who are in schools during report, reporting period time, what happens to learning during that time? Right. <laughs> it stops. There's so much angst. There's so, on, on not just the student's part, but the teacher's part. There's so many deadlines. There's so many, we've got to do this and this and this and this and this before next Tuesday, that learning actually goes to the back burner. And it's not a pleasant place to be. So why do we still do that? We don't have to do that anymore. A couple more things. This is one that is going to be a big change for the system. But this is the one that actually makes my ears ring when I think about how the system and structure flies in the face of what we know about learning. So, and it starts right the way, right when kids first come into the school. We start using terms like not yet meeting. So, in a proficiency-based approach, if just think about this for a second. I'll ask you a question, I'll use my same old example because it seems to work. If two kids are learning how to skate, and this is what skating looks like. First kid learns how to skate in three weeks and falls down three times. The second kid takes six weeks and falls down 40 times. But they're both skating. Does it matter how many times they fell down? No. But what do we do? We keep catching them in their deficiency. Instead of taking some time out of the equation, making some adaptations, and just helping them get to the skating. So how can we, when we know, kids learn in different rates and in different ways, assess them all on the same day in the same way? We need to stop the madness. But it's going to mean big changes. And this one is huge at secondary. Huge, huge, huge. So I'm going to ask you this question. I want you to sort of shout out what you think. What do you think all students must know and be able to do in those graduation learning years? No matter where they're going in order to be successful educated citizens in the world. No matter where they go. Yes? Research. They should be able to research, find things. Yes? Critical thinking, citizenship skills. Should be able to critically think and be good people and good citizens. Effectively express themselves and communicate. Absolutely, in all sorts of different ways, because it's a new world, right, of communication. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, be able to start something, finish it, and be able to fail multiple times along the way. And not be worried about that, right? Not be worried about failing, because it's a huge part of learning. 
We know this. What else? Yes? Basic math. Accounting. Basic math. So numerate. They have to be numerate. Yes? Know how they learn. Know how they learn. Know, about, know some yeah. things about themselves. Even collaborate with people beyond their social circles? Absolutely. Understand what it means to collaborate and work in teams, because that's the world they're heading into. Any others? Self-motivated. Self-motivated. <laughs> right? <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Does, does any, no one said, and you must all be able to factor polynomials, or know the periodic table of the elements. Point is this. There's a level that, there's something called common that all, we want kids to be able to sound intelligent standing around a water cooler in their place of employment, no matter where that is. We want to be able to say, in BC, when you go through our education system, you're literate, you're numerate, you can communicate, you can problem solve, you can, all those things you mentioned. So we want that. But then, put that on top of then, what is the common content in grades in the graduation learning years? We have to say, well, how much of it needs to be common? And how much of it at that point could be personalized? So pretend this is interactive and dynamic and electronic and you can put things in there and take things out. But if you look here, we're even trying to use um, uh, a more positive proficiency level language than, there's no not yet meeting. Can you read those? Yes, I can. So exploring is yellow. Remember, this is all fabricated, by the way. It doesn't work or anything. <laughs> um, green is meeting. Uh, blue or purple or whatever color that is is exceeding. And then orange is distinction. And kids are, if kids can put their authentic evidence of learning with their teacher, coach, mentor in behind each one of those squares, then together you're going to decide, this is my best piece of work for today, but I'm going to take that out and put in this other piece of work because I got better at it and I'm showing you proficiency and we're going to build my profile of who I am and what I can do. As opposed to a piece of paper that has letters and numbers on it that even post-secondary is saying, I don't know what this means. And there's no correlation to percentages there and success in post-secondary. As a matter of fact, a lot of the kids who have had enormous sort of compliant success in our system die once they get to post-secondary. So you see we've tried to get more positive on the proficiency level. We don't know what's going to be common. We made up some stuff. We can the ones in capital letters are somehow the common. And then this is going to be whatever a student and their teacher, activator, mentor helps create of their profile. Down here we'll have like a capstone project that you can click on and see what the student has decided to go deep in their learning on. And see where the literacy numeracy is here? It says provincial assessment. It sounds like, this isn't out of the can yet, but just from the conversations I've had with the AGPA group that I told you about, it looks like the big idea is the ministry should be in the business of guaranteeing the world that kids in our system are literate and numerate. And some of the good news around the conversations that happened around that's what should be provincially assessed because teachers know better than anyone how well kids are doing, but we all have to be able to guarantee this but they talked about let's do it differently. That we open the window so that it becomes more of a proficiency. You can take that assessment because we think you're ready. Do that today kind of thing. And we have the technology to allow that. So pretend that was the case. So that makes literacy and numeracy everybody's business and not just the English 12 person or the math 11 person. It's everybody's business and it doesn't get blended in this new idea. It just is, right? You get assessed at checkpoints along, along your journey. But this, <laughs> where this would be a way better way of just assessing students along the way to get them to at least meeting some level that we determine is necessary for them to be successful no matter what they do and where they go. So then, you see that up here, there's competencies. And if you've looked at the competencies, you'll see there are profiles. You've looked in there and you can see you can click on the profiles and in behind there there'll be descriptors and examples of levels of prof on the profiles, where the profiles have nothing to do with age or grade, just what is. So the idea would be not only would you be able to choose a piece of work, I just haven't figured out how to do this yet, but you'd be able to click down further when 
One of those competencies was also targeted on the block. So let's pretend we use a little dot under, competent, under communication. So a student would be able to say, I'm going to choose this piece of work <coughs> with their teacher, coach, mentor, and I'm going to demonstrate I'm exceeding expectations around what, what this would look like um, as a meeting document or as meeting evidence. And I'm also going to click again and be able to see I'm choosing this piece of work to show that I can communicate effectively in this way. So it would be multi-layers deep. But here's the idea. So have I talked about all that? Yeah. The idea would be that uh, behind every square would be authentic pieces of evidence. But watch what happens. This is the same girl who chose, in this case, a piece of writing to demonstrate proficiency. In another case, she showed a piece of art. So you're getting the drift around representing your learning in all kinds of different ways, and it doesn't have to look the same for everyone. In another case, she chose a project that she'd done. So just look at this project. It's a student-led Aboriginal student form. And her reason she did it was she was feeling badly for the families of some of her friends. The form helped her learn more about their experiences. And it was her contribution to helping them heal. Imagine what you could assess just in that one project as a teacher. Imagine. Then, this next piece, pretend that's a capstone project. Now, the reason I put two people in there, I don't even know what a thermal spectroscopic study of lysosome unfolding means. <laughs> but these two do, and that's what they're jazzed about. But the reason I put two people in there was because, guess what? Collaborating isn't cheating. Only in education, as Ken Robinson says, is collaboration called cheating. What we can start to assess here is the notion that these people also know how to work together, which is another company that we're trying to measure. So you could do this as a project. You could do it by yourself. You could do it in digital form. You could make a speech. You could do anything that you felt demonstrates the deep learning you went into on something you're incredibly passionate about. We have to get some of these systems and structures that are built for a whole different time and a whole different piece of learning out of the way. So the teachers, like the ones that are sitting in this room right now, can do what they do best. Big tasks. Big task. I think we're all agreeing on this. And, and sadly, K-12, post-secondary, we're not seeing most kids talk about their educational experience with passion, purpose, and pride. Well, they deserve to be talking about it with passion, purpose, and pride. So let's get at it. Let's change it. Let's align it with what we know about learning so that they do.